All right, well, that's pretty cool, I think. But sometimes, again, I, I start getting ideas in my head, and I start thinking, well, you know, this is great. I can see what it is for 35 guests, for 50 guests, my totals, and for 15 guests. But you know what? I, I've also checked into a little more on dinner cost and I've found a couple of other places that might can cater my dinner for a different value than what I've got here. In this case, my dinner cost I'm assuming would be six dollars per person. But I, I want to think about maybe spending nine dollars per person or maybe ten dollars per person or maybe dropping that back to zero dollars per person depending on what I need my cost to be and, and what other things I might want to bring to the party and maybe there's some other things I want to do. I uh, like get a more expensive DJ or something like that. So I want to um, modify this just a little bit so that I can change uh, the dinner cost for right now. So if you notice right now it's $6 and so I've got this formula where it says $6 but I've also got this formula right here where it says $6 and this formula where it says $6. In order to make, let's say I want to say, well gosh, what if it's, what if I'm willing to spend $9? Well, I'd have to come in here to this cell and I'd have to change that to nine, which I can do. And then I'd have to come down to this cell and I'd have to change it to nine. And then I'd have to come down to this cell and I'd have to change it to nine. And so at this point, I'm thinking, oh, well, there's what it would cost me if it was nine dollars. Now, what was it if it was six dollars? Uh, uh, well, I got to go back and change it back to see what it was. So it'd be better if there was a way that I could quickly look at the difference between six and nine. Now, I, there's a bunch of ways I could do this. I could approach it like I did the guest, where I have three different numbers of guests. But in this case, I'm going to make it a little simpler, and I'm just going to have make it so that I can change the dinner value real easily. So instead of putting a nine here, or instead of putting a six, I'm going to refer to a cell reference again. Like I did here is a cell I refer to cell B3. Here, instead of typing the number nine, the literal nine in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to, I'm going to type in dinner cost. Okay, I'm just going to type those words in, and then here I'm going to put in nine dollars. All right, or nine. So what I can do is pretty quickly come over here, whoop, and I can come down to the dinner, and you can kind of see a trend here. Instead of putting a nine here, what am I going to do? I am going to put B eleven. This nine, where this nine is. So I put that in, and so now I've got a cell that'll take number of guests up here at thirty-five. Multiply it by B11, which is my dinner cost. I press enter on that. Now, that works really well. Now I can see what it is for nine. If I wanted to change this to, um, you know, to three, or let's say zero, let's see what happens. Well, notice it changed my dinner cost to zero here. So I don't offer dinner. Look at my cost comes down to 855. But if I offer it at five dollars a dinner, if I get that for that cost, look, my cost is going to by 175. And my total cost is 1030 now for that. But now wait, uh, that works great for this column, but I haven't changed these formulas. The formula here is still $9, and the formula here is still $9. So what I want to do is I want to come in here, to right here, and I want to change this to refer to cell, what is it, B, uh, B11, right? So I would type, uh, for, for the 9, I would type in B11. And so that would work fine for that. And now you can see that if, if I change this, watch, watch that cell right there. I'm going to change this to zero. And watch what happens right here for the dinner cost right here. See how that changed to zero for both of those. Now I hadn't done anything to this one, so I've got to fix that one as well. So that works really well. So I've got a formula here that's B11 times B3. And then I've got a formula here that's B11 times C3 right B11 again and but I've got to fix this one you know and I'm thinking to myself you know what I know that Excel will automatically copy right will copy formulas over I've got a formula here what if I copy this formula right here and copy it over to here should work right just like we did before we were copying it over it should work just fine but let's look what happens when I copy this over this does go to zero but it's actually incorrect right now. If I change this to 10, watch this. If I'm going to offer $10 dinners, uh, if that's what I'm going to call uh, uh, cater, $10. If I press enter right now, notice that it did change this cell and this cell, but it didn't change this cell. What if I put in um, uh, $15 dinners? 
Notice again, it changed this cell and this cell, but it didn't change this cell. So something went wrong. When I copied this cell to here, it didn't copy correctly. And this is um, something you're going to have to look out for. It's, it's, it's because Excel uses something called relative cell referencing by default, and we want it to look at something called absolute cell referencing. In this case, we wanted, we're multiplying B11. Uh, I'm sorry, we're multiplying yeah, B11 down here times C3, which is right here. When we copy this from here to here, we, we would like the, um, the B11 to change, I'm sorry, we would like the C3, the C3, which is here, to change to D3, right? Because we're going to copy from column C over to column D, so we want all of the columns to all of the cell references to move over one column. So when I copy it over, I would like the C3 to change to D3, right? So it would be, the number of guests would be 15 that I'd be referring to. But here's the problem. I don't want B11 to change. I don't want it to move over one. I want it to stay right here on B11. But watch what happened in my copy. When I would double click on this cell, you'll see what happened. The cell reference moved over from cell 3 to, to, to D3 just fine. That's what we wanted it to do. But look what happened. This was uh, B11, and it's now changed to C11. And that's what happens in Excel, right? It moves over based upon the column that you're copying to. But we would want this to actually stay the same every time it's copied. We don't want the, uh, the B3 um, to change, right? We don't want the, the B3 to change to, um, I'm sorry, we don't, I messed that up. We don't want the C11, the, the, the B11 to change to C11, okay? So uh, what I can do with this is I can, in the original formula, you got to go back to your original formula, and this really is my original formula way over here. In the original formula, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this formula so you can see me change it. I don't want B3 to change. I want B3 this to say the same as I copy the formula over, but I do want the B11 to not change. I want it to stay B11 even if I copy this formula to other places. So the way I do that is I simply come in and I put a dollar symbol right in front of the B and a dollar symbol right in front of the 11. And the dollar symbol in this case has nothing to do with dollars. It's just the symbol that Excel decided to use to mean don't change this um, column reference and don't change this row reference. You put the dollar in front of the B and it says keep that column B. You put the dollar in front of the 11 and it says keep that column 11 even when it's copied. So uh, the B3 though, notice there's no dollar symbols in it. So the B will change and the 3 will change based upon the cell that it's copied to. So I'm going to press enter and nothing's changed really here, but watch what happens when I copy this over now. Watch. I copy it over and now notice it fixed this 225. If I type in zero right here, notice they all changed to zero. So I was able to copy this formula, which is $B, $11 times B3. And look what happened when it went to C7. It's B11. It still says B11. It didn't change the B11, but it did change the B3 to C3 because it moved to that column. Same thing here. The B11 didn't change because of those dollar symbols in it, but the D3 did. It was B3, and now it became D3 because it moved to a new column. So again, that's called absolute cell referencing. When you take a cell like this, B11, and you want it to stay absolute, you want it to stay the same, you create a cell reference that is an absolute cell reference. This, the B3 in this illustration, is a relative cell reference. That is, it changes relative to the cell that it's copied to. Absolute cell referencing, relative cell referencing. Now, I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I want to, I want to mention one other thing. Uh, Excel will let you do that when you're typing this in. It will let you create a relative uh, or absolute cell reference by pressing the F4 key. Now, to be honest with you, I wish they had never introduced this concept. It's just a shortcut way of typing the dollar symbols. But you could type the dollar symbol in just almost as easily. Dollar A, uh, dollar B, dollar 11 is what I typed in right here, right? But Excel lets you press F4. Watch this. I press F4. 
it just changes the placement of the dollar symbol. You see how the dollar symbol now is in front of the B, but not in front of the 11. That means the B will be absolute, but the 11, the row number, can change based upon this formula being copied somewhere else. You don't really need that. Um, usually, you almost always want the row and the column to stay the same. So you put a dollar in front of the B, a dollar in front of the 11. And I'm pressing F4, and all it's doing is typing the dollar symbol for me. It causes more confusion, I think, uh, for people because they wonder, they understand that F, um, F4 f makes it absolute. But it's really not that, uh, that easy. F4 just is a simple and easy way of typing the dollar symbol in. Well, I hope that was helpful. That is absolute cell referencing versus relative cell referencing.